Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We welcome you to this place. Father God, we pray that you will remove things that is not of you. Father God, we rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Every distraction, anything that is not, Father God, of you, Father God, that might stop the moving of your hand. Lord, I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, Father God, that the flesh will submit to the Spirit of the Lord this morning in the name of Jesus. Speak to us. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus this morning. Who's in the house this morning? All right, turn around, give somebody a smile. All right, you can be seated, amen, hallelujah. Not a serious smile, show your teeth, hallelujah. I say, don't mad dox the next person next to you. Smile. It's going to be all right. To the person next to you, it's going to be all right. Open your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 13. I'm going to jump right into it. Message, the title, I titled it, uh, we're going to continue speaking about purging pride, part two. going to talk a little bit about pride. Is that all right? And for those, amen, we just came back from a, a trip. We got, we got blessed from the church. So on behalf of my wife and I, we want to say thank you. We just came from a little trip for our pastor appreciation gift, amen. So I want to thank the church for uh, uh, giving us that gift, amen, hallelujah. And we're able to enjoy ourselves, my wife and I, amen. It's always a we we'll always have a good time together. Praise the Lord, wherever we go. No matter what situation it is. Thank God for that. Amen. So I just want to say thank you for everybody that participating in sending us to our small trip. Amen. Proverbs, let's all stand for the reading of the word. My wife and I, but for me at least, uh, you know, we like to, I like to stay in, in the city, amen, hallelujah, for whatever reason, amen, knowing that, you know, when I leave, the church will still be here, amen, sometimes you feel like, ah, I shouldn't go, because you never know, right, but, can't be afraid, you gotta go, spend some time, say, spend some time, spend some time with your loved ones, amen, Proverbs 8, verse 13, the Bible reads, and it says, to fear the Lord is to hate evil, I hate pride and arrogance, evil behaviors, and perverse speech. And we'll stop there with that scripture, amen. But it says the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, the fear here is talking about reverence or reverence the Lord. How many of us respect the Lord? How many of us respect the Lord? Right? And fear. And this sentence means to reverence, not to be scared of God, but to have reverence unto the Lord. And when you have reverence unto the Lord, that means that you hate everything that is evil around your life. Right? Amen. You can be seated. Last week we spoke a little bit or just enough, amen, about the word pride. Amen. And what does the biblical or the Bible says about pride? Right? There's many scriptures that God begins to bring out to us in the Bible that talks about pride. You can have pride in your success. You can be prideful in your success. You can be prideful even in poor season or in a, in a poor situation. I know homeless, like I said before, that are out there. We reach out to them and they're too prideful. To receive any help. Can I get an amen? So even them, they can have some kind of pride within their lives. Last week we spoke about one of the uh, hate, most hated sin in the Bible. Speaks about being prideful. Right? Uh, in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2, verse 3, there's an individual by the name of Hannah. And she prayed. It says, do not keep talking so proudly. Or let your mouth speak such arrogance, for the Lord is a God who knows, and by him, him, deeds are weighted. 
Proverbs 16, verse 18, it says, The pride goes before destruction, a hasty spirit before a fall. Right? God's word assures us that pride is rooted in our hearts from the beginning. Can I get an amen? And we got plenty of examples in the Bible that talks about individuals that found themselves dealing with a prideful spirit. Right? In the beginning of the Bible, in the book of Genesis, we know of a couple. The first couple that was built and created, Adam and Eve. Amen? They dealt with the spirit of pride. Right? Because they were leaning on their own understanding. Say leaning. Leaning, leaning meaning they begin to just believe and lean on their own understanding and did what the enemy influenced them to do. If you know, if you know, if you know the Bible in the book of Genesis, Adam and Eve, right? They got deceived into falling into the traps of the enemy. And how many, how many of us know that the enemy? That's what he does, right? The enemy. The Bible says in the book of John, chapter ten, verse ten, Amen. That is a roaring lion, Amen. Right? Looking to who he could devour. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. Those that believe in Jesus Christ and actually have a relationship with God. Because a lot of us, we can believe in Christ, but do not have a relationship with God. Right? There's a lot of us that believe in Jesus. I met many people, amen, in our trip, they believe in Jesus Christ. But they were entangled in many sins. Can I get amen? Right? So therefore, there's many Christians even today, even in our churches today, they walk in, amen, with that attitude or that behavior of self-righteous, right? We know that we talked about last week, amen, that uh, we talked about Saul, amen, he was persecuting the Christians in that road to Damascus, right? And we talked about how he fell off his high horse, we get that one tomorrow, hallelujah, amen, to become humble and to be led by the first time, to be led by a young man to be taken to a city because he was what, blinded. Are you, with, are you with me today? I remember that I spoke a message a while ago. A man that saw, saw sees God in his blindness. Remember that message? And that was uh, Samson, amen. He served God for many years, amen. In other words, he did the work and the duty, but yet never heard the word of God in his life until he was blinded physically. And he was able to see God clearly. Can I get an amen? Right, Paul, a man saw at that time, he was blinded. Therefore, because he was blinded, he was able to uh, see God through his blindness. Can I get an amen? A lot of us, we got our issues. And one of our issues can be, or can be called our eyes. Right? So those wear glasses like me. I'm trying to get adjusted to this thing. Man. Hallelujah. Right? But our eyes gets us in trouble. Right? Because we all intend to see and intend to judge through our eyes. Can I get an amen? And it's through the eyes that the enemy gets to us. Are you with me? Not only through our ears or through our noses when we smell things, hallelujah, but also through what we see, the enemy can what? Infiltrate our soul and our hearts. Can I get an amen? And that's why sometimes we got to make sure that we are focused and our vision is towards God. Can I get an amen? Not towards people. Because eventually people will let you down. Are you with me? How many of us know people that let you down? I've got all my feet, my toe. If I have more toes, amen, I'll lift them up. Hallelujah. But people will let you down. Why? Because we put our reliance on people. Right? We put our reliance and our trust in individuals that are fortunately going to fail us eventually. Ask me why. Because we're not perfect. We, we wear this, this, this body. And this body is always a fleshy attitude. Can I get any man? And that's why the Bible says that we must deny ourselves daily and carry the cross. In other words, we got to deny our flesh from the fleshy desires. Flesh once. Can I get any man? Example is when we go on a diet. Right? As soon as you go on a diet, that's the first, the, the, the first day you get the most hungriest. 
Because your flesh wants what? To be fed. I say, I'm going to go. I'm gonna, why everybody starts on Monday? I don't know. I'm going to start Monday. Monday, I'm going to start a new season. I'm going to lose weight. Right? I'm going to start eating healthy. You spend buku money buying vegetables and buying all kind of stuff that's healthy. Hallelujah. Right? You got your little ninja blade. Right? You're in it. Hallelujah. Because you saw TikTok. Because you got influenced by what you saw. Oh, come on now. You saw the guy. He was nice and healthy. Hallelujah. You say, I want to be just like that. And if I got to just buy me a ninja blender, and if I got to eat vegetable for the rest of my life, then I'll do it. Hallelujah. Right? Can I get an amen? And therefore, that's what we do. We spend all our finances trying to get healthy. And eventually, by Wednesday, Thursday, we start smelling the beans. Hallelujah. And we start smelling the burritos and the steaks. Hallelujah. And there goes all your vegetables and your dreams. Because you got influenced by what you saw. Are you with me? That's why we can't trust what we see. You got to trust what we don't see. That's why it's called faith. Faith sees the invisible become possible. Can I get an amen? Are you with me this morning? So the story here is that Adam and Eve began, they got seduced. Right? They got seduced into eating what we call, or what was called the forbidden fruits. And they end up enticing each other, and eventually they fell into what we call the men, the, the falling of man. Right? Everybody start blaming it, each other, right? You know, the wife blamed the husband. The hu- no, the husband blamed the wife. The, bl- the wife blamed, uh, blamed the serpent. And eventually both of them blamed who? God, are you with me? And that's what sometimes happens with us. Sometimes we'll blame people and we blame others, and eventually we end up blaming God. And it's a dangerous situation if it's not purged. How many of us seen that movie Purged? Maybe last Sunday I mentioned it, and everybody's wanted to Google and watch it. I don't know. I don't know. But the movie Purge is one of the one of the biggest movies out there. Amen. And people, for whatever reason, like violent and watching violent things. Can I get any man? And Purge is a, it's a thing that they did, right, in the movie that every year, you know, once, one time of, of, of the year, amen, you got 24 hours to purge yourself to, they call it to purify yourself of unholy things. They even that ceremonies, right? So what they do is they search for the, th- the person that they hate the most, Right? That was the first movie. The third movie, you know, they just killed anybody. Hallelujah. But I'm just saying, the first movie, if you had some issue with somebody, right, you went to care it and you purged yourself. Right? You, you purify yourself from that hate and that envy and that jealousy and payback. Hello, somebody, right? So what I'm talking about purging pride, amen, that we must purify ourselves and begin to fight. I'm going to say fight. Against the enemy that wants to kill you and destroy your life. Right? The person next to you is not your enemy. Your wife is not your enemy. Your husband is not your enemy. Your children is not your enemy. Can I get any man? But it's the devil, Chamuco, Big Red, Satanás, whatever you want to call them. I said all the other stuff that I said before. Right? The enemy works through what? Spiritual realms of influence. Through TV, through commercials, to gossip, through slander. Hello, somebody. Right? To begin to what? Slow us down. Are you with me? We see the story in the Bible in the book of uh, <clears throat> Second Chronicles. Right? Chapter 26. Of a king named Uzziah. King Uzziah, the Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verse 1, it says, Then all the people of Judea took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, of it, old and made him kin, king in place of his father Amaziah. And he was the one who rebuilt Ephah and restored it to Judea after Amaziah 
rested with his ancestors. Verse 3 says, Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king. And he reigned in Jerusalem for 52 years. <clears throat> See, that's a long time. Right? He was, he was successful in what he, he did. He had many victories in battles against the Philistines and against the enemy of Christ. Can I get an amen? For being a young man and over a thousands and millions of people, amen, he was an individual that was pleasing to God because he did everything wholeheartedly towards God. Can I get an amen? And when you're doing the things of God wholeheartedly, God is pleased in our lives. The danger is when we do things for God half-hearted, right? But this young man was a man that did everything in the, right in the eyes of God. He will pray. He will do the, 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 the right sacrifice. He will consult with Jesus and the Lord for guidance and wisdom and direction throughout his life. It's 52 years of being reigned. But one day, come on, say one day. One day. All his success turn into self-righteous, pridefulness. Can I get an amen? It was a simple, it's a simple, simple issue. Right now, if, if I will say, say it to you, and you'll look at it, and you'll be like, what the heck? That's why he fell short? Verse 16, it says, but after Uzziah became powerful, his pride led him into his downfall. He was unfaithful to the Lord, his God. He entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. In other words, that was, his not, that was not his place. He was a king. He was not a priest. The priest was the one that would bring uh, the sacrificial and, the, and, and all the sacrificial and the sins of the people together. He was the only one with the permission enough to walk, walk into the holies of holies. But he got impatient. He figured he could do it himself. Can I get an amen? And there's something about when you think that you could do things without the permission of God that gets us in trouble. He went and did. What was wrong with, with, with the king going into making some sacrifice? What was wrong with, with, with the king standing in the gap for his people? What was wrong? No, there was an order of things. Can I get an amen? There must be followed. And he, he broke those orders by just going in there and offering the incense himself. Can I get an amen? And for that, God's anger fell on him. With pride. What was it? He found out that once he came out, he had a, a dot in his forehead. A leper dot. Leprosy. For everybody to see. He couldn't hide it because it spread. Can I get an amen? So we somehow that once we find ourselves in a situation of self-righteous or self-reliance, right? God will mark us what we call sin in our lives. He was marked with sin. Easily he could have got, he could have came to the feet of God and repented and asked God for forgiveness, but yet pride will not allow us to humble ourselves unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Even to the fact that he fought, maybe he fought, that he was right. What was wrong with that? What's wrong with taking a bite of the fruit of the, uh, of the for forbidden fruit? It's just a fruit, my friend. But there was an order instructions. There's rules. Can I get any man? The Bible, man, it's a book of rules and regulations. And not only that, but also of promises and and there's also blessings behind it. But uh, also, amen, there's also what we call obedience unto what God wants us to do. Right? Are you with me this morning? The danger of a Christian serving the Lord for a long time is that we could be successful in so many areas in our lives that we forget who God is there. We forget who is the one that was the blesser. We forgot who, who's the one that brought us out. From the pit. Can I get an amen? And, and deception and pride will mess, make us think that it was I. That it was me. It was my decision that I made. 
It was the right decision. I changed some things in my life, amen, that had nothing to do with God. Are you with me? But everything to do with me. What a dangerous spot to be at. Can I get an amen? To be serving God for a long time and forget who was the one that brought us out from that state that we were in. Right? God forget, forbid that we forget what God pulled us out from. God forbid that we forget that we're victory outreach. That we reach treasures out of darkness. Can I get an amen? That we reach the impossible people. Can I, are you with me? You don't see us going to church to church and try to steal sheep. Can I get any man? You don't see us going to the next door church and tell them, come over here with us. We don't do that. Amen. We go to the alleys. We go to the byways. We go to the malls. We go to the stores. We get the sinners of sinners. Can I get any man? Why? Because we believe in reaching the treasures out of darkness. We don't believe in stealing sheep. Right? If we're going to steal sheep, why don't you go steal rob a bank? We were stealers before. Can I get it? We used to rob people. But we don't rob souls. We don't do that in that church. Are you with me? Right? We reach those that are hurting. We reach the, there's plenty of those. There's plenty of sinners out there. There's plenty of people that are hurting out there. There's plenty of people that are abused in Tri-City. There's plenty of souls that are dying today in their misery. There's no need for us to go and search in other churches to bring them to our church. We have no need for that. Simply, you can go to the Circle K and find, find your grip of people that are in need. You can walk down the street and find your grip of souls, amen, that need the, the power of Jesus up on, up on their lives, right? Because God didn't call us to go reach the saved. Are you with me? God didn't call us to reach the saved. God called us to reach the unsaved, the lost, those that are in bondage. Can I get an amen? And, and, and when we, once we begin to understand those things in our lives, amen, the Bible says that you, once you refresh a, a person, you will be refreshed yourself. Paraphrasing, amen. How many of us, amen, we can get caught up in our own mess? Hello? I'm, we get, I get caught up sometimes. Can I get an amen? And the only way that I can break that is by refreshing others. But let him know somebody about the good news of Jesus Christ. Come on, let's get excited for that. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know what pride does? Pride stops you from praying and seeking God. Because you say, I don't need to pray. I'm okay. That's what pride does. Surely you will not die. Then he will whisper in your ear, surely you will not die if you don't pray. Surely you will not die if you don't read the, wor the word. Come on, cut it out. Look, and you don't, you skip and go, see? You didn't die. Give me a high five. Hello? And eventually, you're not dying physically. But you're dying spiritually. Everything gets to you. Come on, have you, have you ever skipped a couple of days of prayer? You didn't pray for a couple of days? How many? Go, let's be honest, we're in church. Right? I'm talking about prayer, prayer. Not talking about like, you know. Little, little two minutes of prayer, amen. I'm talking about prayer. How many of us felt the next day you felt like you missed, you missed something? You're sitting all day like, I missed something. What did I miss? Oh, da, 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 da. What did I miss? I missed something. I don't know what's going on. I missed. No, you missed prayer. That's what happened. Hallelujah. That's when somebody tells you something, you get upset so quickly. Hello? You walk in, oh, Twinkle. What happened, brother? You need healing? Come here. Get your hand on Right? Pride will stop you from praying and seeking God and tell you that you're going to be okay without prayer. Can I get in? Are you with me this morning? So, therefore, we must what? Perch. Come on, everybody say perch. I figure I'll get you guys into that. Amen. Don't go watch it this morning, this evening. Let's go watch that movie Pastor's talking about. But how do you remove this thing within our lives called pride? First thing you got to ask God to reveal if you have pride in your life. 
Some of you guys know I'm prideful. That's even more dangerous than not knowing. Because the Bible talks about the sin is knowing what is right and not doing it. Right? A lot of us, we know that we have an issue, but yet we don't take care of it. You're ignoring it. So therefore, you're still walking in that sin within your life. And eventually, that sin is like cancer. Cancer doesn't start with the big old, right, dot. But cancer starts with a small dot. Undetected. Right? They might go, you got a small dot. We just got to watch it and see what happens. You come back next visit and it's growing. Oh, okay, it's growing. We need to go s- take care of it. Right? That's what sin does. It starts with a small dot. And undetected or unchecked, it begins to grow within your life. And it becomes a cancer within your soul. Right? With the title that you are a leader. With the title that you are a pastor. With the title that you are an evangelist. With the title that you are a man of God or a woman of God. Eventually, it begins to develop within your life. And then what happens is the fall begins to take place within your life. I know a lot of pastors. Not from our ministry, but other ministries as, as well, that, that, that the enemy will allow them to get so successful. And eventually, pull the carpet out of their, under, their, under their feet. Because that way, if you allow them to go so successful, that way, I will not just take the pastor away, I'll take the congregation with them. Oh, you didn't hear that one, hallelujah. Right? Because a lot of people put their trust in who? Man. Man. I'm a man. Man. They put their trust. And they put their pastors or evangelists or, or their favorite preacher or their favorite podcast guy in the pedestal. And when you put that individual in the pedestal, eventually it'll fall. You'll be disappointed. Then you say, well, why should I follow this person or that person or that person? Because they're all fake. Look at the pastor I had before. That's why we as people must take care of our issue ourselves. The problem is not the church. The problem is not the leaders. The problem is not the individual the, uh, 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 or the family. The problem is me, us. Right? Don't, let's not blame, shift our issues away. It was my wife that made me do that. It was my husband that made me do that. It was my coworker that made me do that. No, it was your pride that made you react to what was happening with your family. Can I get it, man? Because nobody talks to me like that. Right? Nobody talks, I'm, let me take my jacket off. Nobody talks, you don't even know me, homie. What the heck? How you, that came out from pastor? You don't even know, right? Pride will kill whoever. You know that pride doesn't need help from envy? Pride doesn't he, need help from lust? Pride doesn't need help for all the other stuff that out there? Pride stands by itself. I don't need nobody else to help me to accomplish what I need to accomplish. So you got to ask God to reveal and to remove pride in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives. You have to have, you have to actually pray to God and ask God, hey God, can you reveal some issues in my life that I need to deal with? Because I'm willing to work on that. Don't ask God if you're not willing. Don't ask God if you're not willing to change your issue. Hello, somebody, right? If you're not willing to give up some things, don't even ask him. Because he's going to reveal it to you, and I think it will be more dangerous if you are, what, rebellious towards that as well. And God will reveal to you that, hey, I have an anger problem. Don't glorify it. Don't get in my face. I get an anger problem. I'm just letting you know. FYI, I gave him his up, cop, officer. He didn't believe me. Are you with me? 
right? If God reveals to you that you have a pride issue, then work on that pride. Begin to destroy it. Begin to what? Uh, 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 disarm those things by what? Breaking it by being humble, amen, and begin to work in your life through that season. Are you with me this morning? If not, it's going to eat you alive. Why? Because it starts in your mind and then begins to be in your heart and then you're living the lifestyle of a self-righteous individual with the lie that God understands. When we do that, God understands. How many have done before? I cussed a little. God understands. Right? I did it. God understands. No, he does not understand why you have not changed. Oh, he does understand. Are you with me? Are you getting something this morning? Everybody's quiet, amen. I'm not talking about money. Don't get pride for me. I'm just kidding, amen. So reading the word will allow you to break through this pride. How many of us read our Bible? Amen. We do like a little devotion uh, that I throw here and there a couple of times here throughout the day. Amen. And some people will respond to it and some people won't respond to it. But reading your word is important. Not only reading your word, but listening to what you read. Right? Listening to what you read. Are you with me? I'm going to ask the worship team to come. I'm gonna, I said I was going to be short, so I am short. Give me a hand clap, please, now. You want more, huh? Yeah, give me more. What happened to Uzziah, King Uzziah? He ended up dying with his leprosy because he was prideful to ask for forgiveness. He lost after 55 years of victory. That, ain't, that was not the accolades that kept him. Doesn't matter how, how long you've been serving the Lord and how successful you've been serving the Lord. Eventually, if you allow sin to creep in within your life, destruction is going to come your way. God is not going to count how many years. God is not going to give you a coin. Give you that one tomorrow. A coin. I've been free for 10 years. This is my coin. You know the coin for the 12 steps? What is it, the coin? What's it called? The AA coin. I've been, I've been clean for 365 days. Come on. Look at it. He's not going to give you a coin. Hello, somebody. I've been saved for 10 years. You don't get a coin. You don't get accolades. I've been serving God for 30 years. No, you better watch out. Because the 30 years can go down the drain if you allow pride to kick in your life. You can have 50 years. That's not going to count in heaven. You're not going to walk into heaven and say, I've been serving you for 50 years. True, come on, give me a high five. No, if you're unfaithful to God, if you're not doing your own thing to God, you, you're being disobedient and rebellious in those areas and prideful, guess what? 50 years is not going to get you into heaven. Matter of fact, you're going to hear the same word of the talent. Get this guy out of here. For the what? The, grind, the snatching of teeth and the weeping of the eyes. You're unfaithful individual. In other words, you, we're not, get it out your mind. We're not going to hear, come on in, my good and faithful servant. And enjoy the, the blessings of the Lord. Those are going to be good words to hear. When you walk in the judgment day, that's the word you want to hear when God sees and opens the, the book of life and begins to look for your name. What's your name? James Negron. The second, the third, the fourth, no, just only one. Patrick in the middle. All right, let me see. Uh, Negron, 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 Negron. Julio? Negron, no, that's not him, no, no. I'll be trembling after that one. I'll, 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 oh my God. It's in there. So I was a pastor. Don't matter. Don't matter. But I used to cast demons out and souls got saved. And I even walked on water when it was raining. 
Still looking for your name, buddy. Hello. Where you at? I'm diseased right now. <laughs> Maybe I misspelled it. Hello. But I've been serving God for 50 years. I gave my life to you. It ain't going to matter if you have pride in your life. If you have arrogance in your life. If you have envy in your life. It's not going to matter if you have unforgiveness. There's Christians today that still have unforgiveness. But yet, they think God understands. God understands why I, I haven't forgiven that person. That hurt me. That person hurt me. No, God, I don't want to hear that. Because God forgave you. God forgave me. God forgave you. Regardless what we did towards God. And a lot of us, we did some bad things towards God. Are you with me? And regardless, he still forgave you. And you fell away, and he still forgave you. And then you fell away, and he still forgave you. And then you fell away, and he still forgave you. We're not, we're not holding records. Right? Are you with me today? God wants to be able, well, God wants you to understand here today that we need some purging to take place within our life. We need to begin to cleanse ourselves and remove some things in our lives. Yeah, God is going to reveal it, but it's going to take you to make the work. It's going to take you to do the work behind it. Can I get it, man? If you have an issue with pride, then you better start learning how to eat some humble pie. I ain't doing nothing for nobody. Start learning, brother. Stay humble. That's what we teach in the home. Stay humble, brother. Be obedient. And it becomes a cliche, right? Be obedient, brother. But eventually in real life, when we are here doing our things, thank God for that. Those sayings. Thank God for being obedient. Be obedient, brother. Stay obedient, brother. Stay in prayer. Thank God for those things because those are the things that have kept me today. Come on now. Those are the things. Amen. Stay obedient, brother. Stay humble, brother. Amen. Stay obedient, brother. So get into prayer when you're going through some things in life. Get into prayer. Get into your closet. Begin to pray. Don't come out until you get a breakthrough. Don't come out of the closet until you come out with a breakthrough in your life. At least I was, when I was in the home, there was a closet. Don't come out until you get a breakthrough. And then that guy's been there for three hours. He's just getting out of short chores now. Hallelujah. He don't want to clean or nothing. I'm trying to get a breakthrough. Hold on. Hello, right? Until you get a breakthrough. How many of us need to get into prayer until we get a breakthrough? How many of us need to get to our fasting until we get a breakthrough? How many of us need to just get a hold of God until we get a breakthrough? Can I get an amen? How many of us are getting sick and tired of the same old same? Are you with me? Therefore, then you, then, then you got to search and seek God and ask God and seek for wisdom to God. Can I get an amen? So stand.